colors of fall are so amazing. I love the bright reds, oranges, and yellows. But sometimes when I'm decorating, I like to add in a few neutral pieces as well. Hey everyone, thanks for coming to hang out in the craft room with me today. My name's Jess. I love to make home decor in a budget. If you do too, then let's get started. These pumpkin signs made from scrap wood or pallet wood always pop up on Pinterest for me. I don't usually have access to any kind of scrap wood, so I wanted to try making one just using Dollar Tree supplies. I grabbed three of these long signs from the Dollar Tree. They usually have these for every holiday and every season. This one was kind of unique because the ends weren't just straight across. They had a little jagged edge to them, which I thought would give this sign more character. I started by taking all the embellishments off the sign and then I tried to take the paper off the front. I don't always do this, but I like to use my garment steamer. It usually does a pretty good job. In this case, it did not. So instead of taking the paper off, I decided just to paint on the back side. Before I could start painting, I wanted to cut my sign down into three pieces. Now the width of my signs, it was just shy of six inches and I wasn't too worried if the pieces weren't exactly the same width with each other. I just made some pencil marks a little under two inches for each section and then I used my utility knife to cut all three pieces. Whenever I use my utility knife to cut this sort of particle board that you get from the Dollar Tree, I find it's easier if you use light to medium pressure and you do several strokes and then bend the board and it will crack in half. Now because I left the paper on the back side of this it created a slightly rough edge so then I just took my sanding block and smoothed out the edges as best as I could but I didn't need to make them completely smooth because this was to be a rustic looking sign. Now that my signs were all broken down into three pieces each, I had nine pieces. I took seven of them, laid them out, and kept two to the side to use later. I took my felt pumpkin piece, laid it on top to make sure that all of my pieces were spaced out and the pumpkin would fit on the sign. And I don't know if you can see it here, but the staples that were on the back of the sign to hold the jute cord, I did leave those in just to give it more character. Then I took some painter's tape and once all my pieces were laid out how I like them, I used the painter's tape to hold everything in place so that I could brace it with the extra two pieces. I flipped the whole sign over and I took one of those extra pieces. I measured how long it needed to be for the back of the sign. I cut it down using my utility knife again and then I used some hot glue to glue everything in place. So since I had two pieces that fit the sign on each side, the extra pieces that I cut off from those two pieces, I just used in the center as a little bit of extra support. If you're still worried that the sign isn't sturdy enough, you could always go through and use a staple gun and add some staples to the back as well. To paint my sign, I started out with the Truffle Color by Waverly and I gave it a nice good coat all over the front of the sign and I made sure I got in between each of the slats as well to cover up those brace pieces. After that was dry, I went back in with the Mineral Color by Waverly and I started dry brushing all over the front of it. I concentrated more of the color on the edges and then I realized that's going to get covered up later so then I started concentrating more of the color through the center of the piece where the pumpkin was actually going to sit. Now anywhere that I felt that I got too much of the mineral color, I just went back through with my sanding block and sanded over it to bring more of that truffle color back through. I needed to take this sign outside to spray paint it, but I was afraid that the felt pumpkin would blow away while it sat out there to dry. So I made a few loops out of painter's tape, put it on the back of the pumpkin, and stuck it down to the sign. The paint I'm using is by Rust-Oleum. It's a spray paint in an ultra matte finish and it's the color white. I gave one light coat to the entire sign, making sure that I got in between all of those openings on the pumpkin. Once my spray paint was dry, I peeled back my felt pumpkin and took off all the painter's tape and my image was revealed. Now the great thing about using that felt pumpkin is that you could reuse it several times and I think these would make really nice gifts for somebody, especially if you wanted to personalize it. You could put their family name or just a monogram in the center of the pumpkin. Music 
this metal pumpkin from the Dollar Tree was the inspiration for this next project, I wanted to create a trio of neutral pumpkins. So I took that along with the bigger pumpkin sign and a smaller wooden pumpkin. I took all the embellishments off of the larger pumpkin and I also removed the metal stake from the back of the metal pumpkin. I used some of the spackling from the Dollar Tree. I filled in the holes at the top of the largest pumpkin and the stem of the smallest pumpkin. I painted each of the three pumpkins with the same color. The two wooden pumpkins just needed one coat, but the metal pumpkin needed two coats. I wanted to create stripes on the largest pumpkin. I started by placing a piece of painter's tape going vertically on the pumpkin. Here I have the pumpkin laid on its side, but that's just because it's easier for me to put the tape on that way. After I had the initial piece in the center, then I went back through with some thinner washi tape. I laid a piece of the thinner tape on each side of the painter's tape. Then I laid another piece of painter's tape next to the washi tape and then I pulled up the washi tape and that's where my paint's gonna go. I wanted thinner stripes on this pumpkin. I just repeated that pattern the whole way across my pumpkin until all of my painter's tape was in place. Rather than creating a solid color stripe on my pumpkin, I took my paintbrush and I dipped it in the paint, dabbed most of it off, and I dry brushed it over all of the stripes so that some of that white color would show through and it gave it more of a diffused look. For the metal pumpkin, I wanted to really bring out the pattern that was embossed on the pumpkin. So I'm using the same color, dry brushing again, just very lightly over the surface so the paint just kind of catches on all of those raised areas. And for the smallest pumpkin, I'm just using the back of a paintbrush, dipping it in the paint and creating polka dots all over the surface. I use that same paint color again to define all of the stems on the three pumpkins. After all my paint was dry, I was ready to assemble the three pumpkins. For the metal pumpkin, I'm using a combination of this fix-all adhesive from the Dollar Tree, which is their version of E6000, and some hot glue, because I've tried just using hot glue in the past and it doesn't always work great on metal. But the combination of the two glues together gives a nice strong hold. I needed to create an even surface for the smallest pumpkin to sit on. I used some hot glue. I attached one of the tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree next to the metal pumpkin. And then I was able to hot glue the smallest pumpkin right to that. Even though I'm using all neutral colors today, I think this pumpkin trio would look great in some brighter colors also. I have an assortment of foam and ceramic pumpkins in my stash that I wanted to give a slight upgrade to. I found these gold distressed pumpkins on Amazon and I knew they would be easy to recreate. I gave each of the pumpkins two coats of this metallic gold spray paint by Rust-Oleum. The cool thing about this gold spray paint is that unless you actually pick up the pumpkins, you can't really tell the difference between the foam ones or the ceramic ones. Now to give my pumpkins that whitewash look, I'm using a stencil brush because the bristles on this one are a little spread out. I dipped it in my paint, dabbed most of the excess off, and then brushed it over the surface. You can add as much or as little paint to your pumpkins as you want, but I wanted more of the gold to show through on mine. The stems of my foam pumpkins were missing, so I grabbed a floral pick from the Dollar Tree, cut the tips off, and hot glued it to each of my foam pumpkins. Because the ceramic pumpkins already had a nice stem to them, I didn't have to do anything to those. You could stop here and leave these pumpkins as is, but I wanted to add a few embellishments to mine. I had this berry garland in my stash and the berries on it are a nice muted gold just like the pumpkins. I cut a piece off, twirled it around a stick to create a spiral and hot glued it to the top of the stem. Then I finished it up off with a piece of ribbon that I had. I tied a knot in the center and glued that over the berry garland. I love how grapevine wreaths look for any season, but especially for fall. These sweater pumpkins from the Dollar Tree are so cute, and when I saw them, I knew they would look great on a wreath. 
I started with this floral pick from the Dollar Tree. I cut some of the longer pieces off and I tucked it into the grapevine wreath on either side of the center of the bottom. That's the other thing I really like about grapevine wreaths is that normally when I put mine together, I don't have to use any hot glue. I can either just tuck things in or tie it on and then I can take it apart and reuse it for another season. I clipped pieces off of another floral stem to act as my second layer to my wreath. This floral stem was a little bit too big to just use on its own. That's why I clipped the pieces off. I grouped three of them together, added a bit of hot glue towards the bottom, and then I used a piece of clear tape just to hold everything in place. Once that was set, then I was able to lay it on my wreath where I liked it, and I just tied it in place with a piece of jute. I took some wide burlap ribbon and I started creating a bow. I looped it over until I liked the width and I liked how it fit in the center of my wreath. I took another piece, looped it over, made it slightly smaller than the first one. I stacked those two together along with a third piece to act as a tail. I cinched everything in the center and tied it with a piece of jute. I left some longer tails on the jute cord so that I would have enough cord to tie on the center of the wreath as well. The final touch on this wreath is to add the sweater pumpkins and because they have these clips on the back, it made it really easy. I was able to lay them in place and either clip them to the wreath itself or to any of the floral picks that were in there. If you know me, you know I love a wood bead garland and these mini wool pumpkins from the Dollar Tree go great on those. I started with a thinner piece of jute cord. I strung it through a needle that had a pretty big eye on it and I doubled up the jute so that I was going to be stringing the beads onto two pieces of jute rather than just one. When I do a wood bead garland, sometimes I use all the same color bead, but sometimes I like to create a pattern out of different colored beads. For this garland, I used four white beads, a gray bead, a black bead, another gray bead, and then another four white beads. After the second set of white beads, I took my needle and I poked it right through the center of one of the wool pumpkins. This just has a little fiber fill in the center, so it was pretty easy to poke through. Then I repeated that same pattern until I liked the length of my garland. For the tassels for the ends of my garland, I'm using this gray and white baker's twine that I got at the Dollar Tree. I wrapped it around my sanding block about 30 times. I tied it in the center to hold it in place and then I clipped off the ends. Now because I used two strands of jute string to string my beads, I was able to tie this tassel right to the end of the beaded garland. After my tassel was tied on to the garland, I dropped about an inch down from the end of the beads. I took another piece of baker's twine and I tied it in place. Then I had to give a little haircut to the bottom of the tassel to even out the edges. If you're hosting any family or friends for any kind of get togethers this fall, I have a couple of ideas for you too. I grabbed a pack of these wooden pumpkin ornaments from the Dollar Tree to make a set of coasters. Now the wood on these is pretty thin, so I doubled them up with a little hot glue to make them a little thicker. Once they were all glued together, I used some of the antique wax and gave them a quick stain. I grabbed this white metallic marker from the Dollar Tree, but you could use any type of chalk marker for this part. I wanted to add a few details to my pumpkin. I did something similar to this in another video for a garland. I just went around the outside of the pumpkin doing some squiggle lines and a few dots. Then I went through the center of the pumpkin and doing the same type of pattern with the squiggly lines and the dots, I wanted to show off the natural curvature that a pumpkin has. You can seal coasters with regular Mod Podge, but I always like to use the dishwasher safe kind because I think it holds up to more heat. And because there may be hot beverages placed on these coasters, I wanted them to be more protected. I gave each of my coasters two coats of this Mod Podge. 
Even though there's going to be a cup or a mug on these coasters, I couldn't help but add a little embellishment. I took a piece of ribbon, I just tied a knot in the center, finished off the ends with a little point, and then I hot glued it to the top of the pumpkin to add a little cuteness and to cover up the hole at the top. I wanted to make sure that my coasters wouldn't slide around. I cut an oval out of, out of a piece of cardstock and made sure that it fit on the back of the pumpkin. Then I used that oval as a pattern to trace on to the adhesive cork sheets that you can find at the Dollar Tree. And because they do have a sticky back, I just had to peel it off and stick it to the back of my coaster. Another fun thing you can make for any type of fall party or get together are napkin rings. I like to make mine using these flexible chopping mats from the Dollar Tree. In addition to those, you'll need some faux leather pumpkins, some assorted ribbons, and a few pieces of greenery. For the base of the napkin rings, I'm using a piece of the chopping mat and I'm measuring about an inch wide, marking it with a Sharpie, and then cutting it with scissors. Once all of my strips were cut, I looped it around until it looked like about the right size for a napkin ring and I cut off the excess. I wanted to cover mine in burlap and the burlap roll that I had on hand was a little too wide just for one ring. I was actually able to cover two strips using this same roll of burlap, but if you don't wanna use burlap, you could use any type of material or any type of ribbon. The burlap I'm using has a pretty tight weave to it, so I was able to hot glue it down with no problem, but depending on what type you use, just be careful if you're using hot glue so that it doesn't seep through and burn your fingers. I cut the excess fabric off of both ends, then I used some hot glue on one end, rolled it up until it met the other end, and I used a clip to hold it in place until that hot glue had a chance to set. I found this ribbon back in the spring at Dollar Tree and I thought it had such a neat texture to it. If you don't have something like this in your stash, you could always use raffia instead. I cut a length of this fun ribbon and cinched it in the center, tied it with a piece of jute, and then I hot glued it to the napkin ring where the two seams met. On top of the ribbon, I hot glued a few pieces of greenery and then the final touch was to hot glue the leather pumpkin to the center. And don't worry if you don't have cloth napkins, you can always stick paper napkins inside a fancy napkin ring too. Thanks for coming to hang out in the craft room with me today. I left some more videos on the screen that I think you might like. I hope you have a great week and I'll talk to you in the next one.